Hello, Kev, Leeds Harmonica, uh, Harmonica Miscellanea again. I want to talk a little bit today and to demonstrate an option that you have for playing amplified harmonica without necessarily having to lug a harmonica amplifier or a guitar amplifier more likely around with you. The sort of broken up, overdriven, distorted sound of old tube amplifiers is really desirable for uh, certain styles of harmonica playing, certainly Chicago blues, popularized by Little Walter. I don't want to get into a debate on who actually was the first person to jam a microphone <laughs> into, a, into a guitar amp, but it's safe to say that Little Walter popularized it. The sound of a tube amplifier distorting, it happens when the, the signal it's getting is too much for the components in the circuit tubes to handle and the signal becomes broken essentially it distorts but it turns out that this distortion it actually sounds fantastic guitar players love it and harmonica players love it as well however there are issues with amplifiers especially tube amplifiers they are heavy they are fragile they require a certain amount of upkeep and servicing tubes don't last forever you know they wear out eventually sooner or later it's going to die you don't know when so it's not ideal in terms of convenience the option that i prefer to take which i'm talking about today is to use a little uh, guitar pedal little guitar uh, sound processor that emulates the sound of a broken up amplifier but doesn't weigh a ton it's very transportable and in this case a fraction of the price of of a tube amplifier now there will be people who will say that the sound isn't as good it just doesn't sound quite the same as an overdriven harp amplifier and to be perfectly honest I agree with them. It doesn't sound exactly the same. There is a little bit of something magical that's going on there. However, that little bit of something magical is not enough for me to lug an amplifier around on public transport. It is not enough for me to want to pay A, a lot for an amplifier, and then B, have to keep worrying about it. Changing the tubes, buying new tubes, it's too much. If you wanna do that, then all power to you. It's fantastic. If I had all the time and money in the world, I'd do it myself. If I had someone to lug my amplifier around for me, I'd probably do it, but I don't. Um, I live in the real world and I'm busy. I'm usually quite stressed and I don't wanna be worrying about stuff like that. I don't even own a harmonica amplifier anymore i've gone i've committed 100 percent to this way of playing and to be perfectly honest i couldn't be happier all we're missing is that final little few percent of like i say something magical and it isn't what you get from that is not what for me is not worth the hassle. It's not worth the cost. It's not worth the stress. So I think this is brilliant. So all I'm gonna do today is I am going to, well, when I get home, I'm just gonna plug this pedal in, show you what it does, take you through some different tones uh, dem uh, and demonstrate how you can use it. I think it's wonderful. I, I mean, it's brilliant, isn't it? That we live in a time where we have these options. It blows my mind absolutely blows my mind and it's so cool <laughs> i love it hello so this is the little pedal that i've been banging on about there are other pedals obviously that do the same or similar things um i'm aware i'm not sort of breaking any new ground here this isn't sort of hidden information that i'm <laughs> providing to you it's well known and well liked in the harmonica community um, I'm just highlighting it because I like it and I think that other people 
might well get something out of it as well. In fact, even if you're an amp user, it would be great for a backup, just in case your amp dies at a gig or something. So, anyway, um, I've got my HB52 plugged into this, which is then plugged into a passive, uh, a powered rather, PA speaker. And this is what it sounds like with the pedal not engaged. <laughs> Not very inspiring at all. But if I whack this on, suddenly we're in a different different world altogether. Um, so what are we dealing with here? We've got an EQ along the top, lows, mids, highs. Obviously, we can um, accentuate or deaccentuate any of those bands. We've got the level here, which is um, volume, basically. These two here are where the magic happens, really. Um, <clears throat> I think the idea behind this voice control is that it's supposed to emulate various different styles of Fender amps over the years. Um, and it certainly gets a lot more of a sort of pronounced mid-range and you get a bit more grunt as you as you turn it clockwise the drive you can think of as distortion <clears throat> it controls how much the uh, how much breakup the thing is going to put out so what i'm going to do is i am literally just going to play fiddle play fiddle play fiddle and show you some of the tonal options that are in this thing so here we go so that's all right it's a bit thin well i'm pretty silly because um i've just filmed everything that you're about to see and although it sounded okay i was as i was doing it i was thinking god this sounds a bit it doesn't sound quite right i don't know what's going on but I did it all anyway, and then afterwards realised that I had the bass control on the PA speaker turned way down. So that's why it wasn't sounding quite as uh, as bassy as I'm used to, but hey-ho. Um, just bear that in mind, I guess. Sorry. So I'm going to accentuate the mids, take the highs down a little bit. Um, I might do something like that. Ah, that's better. <laughs> Pretty good. Um, I'm going to turn the... Let's just try. Oh, that sounds... Oops, I'm right on the edge of feedback there. Being right on the edge of feedback is actually um, quite a good place to be. It usually sounds good. Um, I would probably go with something like that, to be honest, I might tweak it a little bit. The thing is, you do really need to um, set it up every time, because every room's different. Um, it's not like you can just pick a, pick a setting and say they're your settings, you know, you need to sort of adjust to where you are. Let's, if I turn the voice all the way down... Oh yeah, it loses a lot of its... Uh, Loses a lot of its mojo there. Uh, let's turn that round. If I turn that... Ooh! There's going to be a balancing balancing act between these three knobs. Um, the higher you turn up the voice and the higher you turn up the drive the more likely you are going to get feedback. And actually, my mic is right in front of the speaker here, so I'm in a, giving myself a feedback problem from, uh, from where I'm sat. I think I like that. Might prefer... A little bit less drive. Try that. 
So you can hear the breakup, obviously. Um, turn that More with the drive up. A little less with it down. Um, you could go really extreme, but no one's really going to use that. But um, one of the other things that I like to do with it is simply use it instead of um, going for that sort of Chicago breakup sound. It, if you loosen up your cup on the microphone and hold the harmonica a little farther away, it actually works nicely as a little um, just sort of tone conditioner for a clean sound as well. So you've got, still got a lot of sort of harmonicariness coming through there. Pretty cool. I, I mean, you can play about with these things forever. I just think it's, I just think it's wonderful that we've got the, this option. This, by the way, costs around. I paid thirty pound. No, I didn't. I think I paid forty pounds for this one. But then a week later, I found one on Amazon for thirty. So the prices go up and down a, um, a little bit, but they're usually between thirty and fifty quid. And for an amplifier, the is as has as much utility as this thing does. That's just that's peanuts.